You're listening to Civic Media. Stay up to date on the latest news and information for your local community and Wisconsin by signing up for our free email newsletter. Visit civicmedia.us slash email to get started. This is your WMDX Daily News Roundup for Mad Radio 92.7 FM and 1580 AM in Madison. This is Civic Media News. I'm Savannah Tome Olson. Cases of whooping cough are 10 times higher across Wisconsin right now than this time last year, according to the Wisconsin Department of Health Services. More than 600 cases have been reported to officials. In all of last year, there were only about 50. Two-thirds of Wisconsin counties have had at least one person who got sick from the infection. Kids ages 11 to 18 account for about half of all cases. Minors should be up to date on their vaccines, especially young kids and babies, and adults should get an updated Tdap shot every 10 years. We know broadband access is an issue for many Wisconsinites, especially in rural areas. A new report gives the state a C-minus in broadband connectivity. The American Society of Civil Engineers put out report cards for each state. Their grade means Wisconsin is meeting most needs right now, but requires expansion to meet needs of the future. Wisconsin ranks 38th in the nation for broadband access. Democratic nominee for president Kamala Harris is holding a rally in Madison tonight. Both campaigns have been leaving their footprints across Wisconsin as one of the most crucial states in the election. Back in July, Donald Trump had a six percentage point lead against Joe Biden among voters over 18 here in the Badger State. Fast forward. After Biden left the race, Harris became the nominee and they've had one debate. In that same poll, Harris now leads Trump by a single point among Wisconsin voters. Pollster Bob Ward on how independents are key. The movement among independents, where Trump was ahead uh, of Biden by five points two months ago, and now Harris is ahead by 11 points. Meanwhile, when it comes to Wisconsin voters over 50, Trump is ahead by two points. But there are some gender trends, too. Trump maintains more support among male voters around the state, while Harris is strongly backed by women in this latest poll. Election officials are asking the Wisconsin Supreme Court to decide whether Robert F. Kennedy's name should be taken off the ballot. Kennedy is now a member of Donald Trump's transition team. He's trying to make it easier for his supporters to vote for Trump. He's been fighting that battle in court here in Wisconsin, where previous judges have told him under state law the only way off the ballot is to die. The case is currently in the Second District Court of Appeals, but the Wisconsin Elections Commission wants the liberal majority state Supreme Court to take the case. And while the National Teamsters Union declined to endorse a presidential candidate, Wisconsin's did anyway. The National Union represents more than 1.3 million members and has endorsed a Democratic candidate in every presidential election since 2000. The Wisconsin chapter of the Teamsters unanimously voted to endorse Vice President Kamala Harris and Governor Tim Walz. They joined Teamsters unions in Michigan, Nevada, and Pennsylvania, who have done the same. Now, here's what you need to know closer to home. Vice President and Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris is here in Madison tonight. Wisconsin is a huge part of the campaign strategy, and so is Dane County itself. Democrats are opening their 15th campaign office here today. Statewide, they have offices in 43 of the state's 72 counties. That includes 250 staffers. This is her fourth visit to the Badger State after entering the race for president. We'll have a special broadcast tonight here on 92.7 WMDX. And it's a big weekend for transportation here in Madison. The bus rapid transit system officially launches on Sunday. The project has been in the works for more than a decade. Much of it was paid for by the federal government. The new system includes digital fast fare payment, electric buses that can hold double the number of passengers, and a shorter trip between the east and west sides. Now, even if you don't use our public transportation, now is the time to really start paying attention to that bus-only red paint on the road. Last year, six Dane County kids were hit by cars in school zones. That's double what we've seen in all four years previous, according to the Dane County Traffic Safety Commission. Overall, 43 kids walking or biking to or from school have been hurt in the last five years. The commission says often people aren't obeying the rules around school buses, and a majority of those incidents involve speeding. This month, law enforcement across Dane County will focus on enforcement in school zones, Meanwhile, parents are asking the city of Madison for more crossing guards. Right now, they're only required at elementary schools. When elementary and middle schools started around the same time, for the ones where the middle school and the elementary school were kind of close together, everybody benefited from those crossing guards. Now that the middle schoolers start later, they don't have that protection. The city's Transportation Commission is investigating the issue to see if there's any possible solution. They say adding crossing guards at middle schools could cost taxpayers up to $229,000. 
Dane County's latest budget proposal is lower than last year's. Remember, right now, Jamie Kuhn is in charge. She was appointed after Joe Parisi retired. Kuhn said this year they have lots of tough choices. The capital budget is about half of what it was under Parisi's last budget, meaning there would be far fewer new projects on the docket. But included are additions to Sunshine Place Community Center, new investments in affordable housing, and an expansion of the Alliant Energy Center. But some things were left out, like additional funding for Second Harvest Food Bank. On November 5th, the voters will choose the next executive who will carry out Kuhn's plan. And Monroe's famous Cheese Days begin today. It holds the title of the oldest food fest in the Midwest. It started all the way back in 1914. There's a parade and polka and yodeling and tons and tons of cheese. The festival is so big they can't hold it every year. It takes them two whole years for them to plan. Green County Cheese Days runs all weekend in Monroe. A celebration of one of Madison's most unique neighborhoods is this weekend. It's the Willie Street Fair. There's tons of live music, even kids karaoke, and on Sunday there's a parade. The Willie Street Fair begins tomorrow at 2. On Sunday it starts at 11 a.m. This is the 47th year of the event. And the Black on State Block Party is this weekend, too, that celebrates Madison's black culture, businesses, and creativity. That's Sunday from noon to 6 on State Street. For September, we've got a hot weekend ahead for these events. Sunday, there are some rain chances, too, so you'll want to check the forecast. And this weekend is your last chance to check out an art show that the creators themselves call unhinged. Remember Furbies from the 90s and early aughts? I remember mine. I had a pink and green one. They're small, they have plastic eyes, they're furry, and they're kind of creepy. Well, there's a show called Friday the Furbteenth. It explores themes of back to school, 90s nostalgia, all through Furbies. The show is at the Commonwealth Gallery on South Baldwin Street. Sunday is its last day. That's what you need to know. I'm Savannah Tomei Olson, WMDX News. Jordan Love might be ready to play this week. Hi, I'm Jimmy Cusco with Sports, filling in for Mike Clemens. It seems all anyone can focus on is the quarterback situation in Green Bay. Jordan Love was hurt in the season opener, but he might be available to play this Sunday. Love said he's feeling better. He's definitely feeling a lot better. Um, a lot better for when, you know, the injury happened um, in Brazil. So, you know, the whole thing is, like we said before, just taking it day by day. Um, trying to see, you know, how it feels every day. And uh, coming here, keep doing the treatment, keep doing the rehab, and... Uh, you know, was out there today and uh, just trying to take it day by day and, and just keep filling it out, but it's feeling better. Love said he had a lot of thoughts when the injury happened. You know, when it happened, it was very painful. I was telling it was the most pain I've been in on the field. So, you know, just a, a lot of emotions, but definitely very painful. And, uh, you know, didn't know in the moment what, what might have happened, you know, what the injury actually was, how long I might be out. So it was definitely a, a scary moment. If Love can't go, Malik Willis will get his second start. His former team, the Tennessee Titans, hosts the Packers Sunday at noon. The NL Central champion Milwaukee Brewers lost Thursday 5-1 to to the Arizona Diamondbacks. The loss puts the Brewers three games back of the National League's best record. Same two teams tonight in Milwaukee. Wisconsin basketball, both men's and women's, announced their conference schedules on Thursday. You can see them at uwbadgers.com. Filling in for Mike Clemens, I'm Jimmy Cusco with Civic Media Sports. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Headed to the cinema this weekend? The horror trend continues as Never Let Go, starring Halle Berry, hits theaters. The story follows a family who has been haunted for years until one of the kids starts to question things. Never Let Go is reviewing well at 74% on Rotten Tomatoes. And Optimus Prime and Megatron are back on the screen in animated form and have an 89% on RT in Transformers 1, which opens this weekend and shows what the sworn enemy's relationship was like before they changed the course of Cybertron. I didn't understand a lot of those words either. And if you're in a bigger city, there are a couple films in limited release that reviewed fairly well. Wolves, an action comedy starring Brad Pitt and George Clooney, just premiered at the Venice Film Festival, and it's getting a 68% on Rotten Tomatoes. Superman, the Christopher Reeve story, is also in limited release. It's a documentary of a fascinating life and pulls a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's go to the movies. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez either like toying with their fans or have serious personality disorders. Yahoo recently reported that fans were devastated by the couple's breakup. That's right, people who have never met them are devastated and not focusing on the shortcomings in their own lives. Now some sources say the couple is reigniting the romance. Luckily, most people still couldn't care less. If you take a shot at Taylor Swift and her boyfriend, you might just be chased into Twitter or ex-oblivion. Just as country singer Zach Bryan, the singer has apparently been listening to a lot of Kanye recently and decided to take a shot at his summer time rival Swift. Brian insinuated the Eagles were better than the Chiefs, taking a shot at Travis Kelsey, and that Kanye was better than Taylor, and then asked the ex-Twitter world, who's with me? But Swift fans move fast. They came out in force to defend their girl, forcing Zach Bryan to deactivate his account. Really? Street cred obliviated by the Swift army. 
What would Kanye say to that? Looking for a new show to binge that will make you laugh heading into the weekend? Here are some Emmy winners worth taking a look at. Hacks took home Best Comedy and brought Gene Smart the Emmy for Best Actress and Best Comedy Writing. All three seasons are available on Max. If it's a drama you want, Shogun won 18 Emmys, including Best Actor, Actress, and Best Drama. There is a season two in the works. Happy viewing. Lady Gaga is having a very good year. The singer-actress plays opposite Joaquin Phoenix in Joker Fully Odu. She had a chart topper with Bruno Mars and has a studio album coming out in October. She recently appeared on the podcast What's Next? The Future with Bill Gates and addressed rumors that people said she was a man early in her career. Gaga said when dealing with misinformation, her attitude is, I'm used to it, I'm a performer, and I think it's kind of funny. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba. Weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. Becoming sunny today, we'll have highs in the mid-80s. Mostly clear tonight, lows in the mid-50s. Sunshine, 87 for Saturday. Sunday, showers and storms, cooler 72. For Monday, more showers and thunderstorms with a high around 72. 73 on Tuesday. Currently, 69 degrees. That's your WMDX Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at mad.radio. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 